couch Dogs need the lesson Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome back to yet another awesome lesson right here on Lickin' Riff in which we'll continue to explore the making of beautiful music out of just a handful of chords. In this video, we're gonna use three chords. We're gonna use B minor, A, and G. A, B minor, A, and G. And I recommend using the open position shapes because you have an insane amount of music to unlock there. Okay, without even adding extra notes. Um, while if you play the bar shapes, first of all, it's very confining because you have to use all your available fingers, which is already confining. And the second thing is that it's difficult to get different expressions when you just have the same chord moving around, okay, all the notes moving around together at the same direction, at the same time, um, and you just get the same block of music just changing its pitch. Okay, this is basically the same chord just moving up and down, which isn't very musical. This is a lot more musical than this, where everything goes in the same direction. So let's start exploring. Okay? You have B minor. And if you play G with the 3 and 3 on strings 1 and 2, then you have a choice. You can play strings 1, 2, and 3 with the bass with G, or you can play strings 2, 3, and 4, okay? A low G chord, okay? You can also play the chord with the open 2nd, 3rd, and 4th strings, okay? Which is also another expression, all depending on the melody you want to create. So let's test this with just playing the chords and I'm playing the melody on the E string with B minor and then the open E string for A I play it right before I change the chord and I play a syncopation there right before the beat right before the chord change I can play it with the beat also great. Okay, you play it. You play it however you want to play it. This is all about musical creativity. Experiment with it. And then I can push the finger on the second string okay, to three, from two to three, from A to G, and then put the chord on. Or change to the chord. Now, when I play G with the second string on three, I can use the open E string again if I like. gives me a G6 sound okay, with the open E string and 3 on the B string with a G chord. Immediately we have one new expression. Okay. Now um, I use the open strings Okay, and I hammered on the, the A chord. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, I did my mistake, but I just continued playing. Yeah, you can hammer on the A chord. And turn the mistake into a motif. Okay, and slide to the three. You can use the open E string for G first and then do the same thing and use the full chord the next time. Three on the E string. I'm just giving you options and ideas here. Um. And then you can open the third string. So it's three different expressions, three completely different lines. Not completely different, but very different. If you play G with three on the second string, the open E string, the th three on the E string, or the open second string, you have actually four different expressions. You have four different expressions for the G chord alone. Um, now, you can also play the low notes. You can play strings 
three and four, for example. Okay? Which, granted, is just moving the chord around. Okay, again, it's, it's what I wanted to avoid with this, but you can use it. Just strings three and four. But this is not very interesting. What's, what is interesting is when you use it to your advantage inside the line. For example, you play B minor. Okay? You play B minor, you play strings two, three, and four this time. And then A. And then for G, you play strings three and four. A very low sound. can variate on this. Now, you can open the strings. You can play the open E string with B minor. You can borrow from one another. Because you have G, you have strings 2, 3, and 4 open. So you can do the same. Okay, you can do the same with any chord. You can open the second string. You can open the third string. You can open the E string. Okay, you can do it with A as well open second string. The open third string gives you an A7 chord, so be careful with it. You don't really want a seventh chord there. Uh, unless you find it, unless you find that it suits your vision. And you can also... Yeah, you can also borrow from the A chord into a G chord. Yeah, you can play the two and two on strings three and four while playing G. Okay. You can play A over G. You can play 2-2-2 two, two, two on strings 2, 3, and 4 with the G bass. You can play B minor with the G bass. This creates G major 7. So uh, you, can, you can be cr very, very creative, but I suggest you do the basic things first. Okay, just your page options that I showed you. You can play B minor, you can play B minor without the bar because these notes are inside A, the open E and A strings. So you can play, you can play B minor over A. You can play, it's B minor at 11 over A to be exact because of the open E string. Then you can put the G bass on and you get B minor, uh, B major 7. B major 7, G over, uh, B minor over G is G major 7. So you can use that to your advantage as well. Just change the bass notes. But you can't really hold this too long because it starts to get repetitive. So again, th these are your tools. These are your ideas. You can just use them. three bass notes, B minor with A and G as the bass notes, just as a new idea. When you start running out of ideas with the shapes themselves, you can take a note and add it to the chords. You can play uh, the two on the E string with A and with G. You can, you can do this. So you get A6 and G, minor, uh, G major 7. So B minor has the F sharp note. And then you just bar. You have 2, 2, 2, 2 on strings 1, 2, 4 and the 5th string. Okay, so it's A6. And then you just put 2 on the E string and play it with the G bass. 2 and 3 on strings 1 and 3. Uh, 1, and, uh, 1 and 6. Too many numbers. Sorry. And you can add three on the second string as well. Yeah, if you want, if you really want to. To create a really interesting sound. So... Ah, it was a mistake, but I 
manage to save it somehow. If you just keep playing, nobody will notice that you didn't mean to play anything. You see, you can do 0 2 on the A chord. You don't really have to play the whole chord all the time. You can play uh, the open second string with everything. You can do... Right? You can play the B minor without the bar with the open second string as well. Then you can slide the remaining two fingers down to A. Okay? So you can do that. And then you have the open second string with G. Um, and as I said, you can borrow notes. Now, there's another note you can add. You can add the five on the E string. Now, what, what is that doing there? Um, it's an A note. Okay, so if we borrowed the F sharp note, if we played the open B note, then we can add A. Okay, it's inside our chord, so you can add an, a high A note. So 5 with B minor becomes B minor 7. 5 with A becomes just A. And 5 with G becomes G add 9. So you can play 5 and then play the original note, the 3 on the E string. So you can create a melody out of that. And then... continue with the chord notes. Now you can play the barred chords eventually just to play the high notes. But this is not very interesting. So what can you do? You can play you can play the, the B minor on seven. You can play the A but use your pinky to play seven again on E. And then you can either play G with 5, and then 5-3. Five, five, or you can leave the 7 on and play it with G. Now you don't have to bar, you can play 7 and 3 on strings 1 and 6. You see? It all depends on how you look at the chords, and the G chord is a very good chord to manipulate because you have the three open strings, strings one, two, and three. So on the E string, you can basically do anything. So you can do B minor on two, A on five, okay, with A and five. Slide to seven and play it with the G bass. So, You can play 7-5-3 along with the G chord. Okay? And just, again, throwing out ideas. You take whatever you, you like out of them. You don't have to play everything. Okay? And you can change the rhythm. You don't have to keep it mellow. You can do... See, I'm using the two on the E string that I showed you. I'm using the, the two on the E string with all the chords. Then I'm sliding into A, sliding into B minor. And now I added a little lick. I did I did uh, three two three two zero on the second string. Okay, when I was on G, again because it's very easy. I, I just put one finger for the G bass, and then I have two free fingers to play. You can play the bass with the thumb, and then you can. Yeah, you can. Play any note you like along with the G bass if you have the thumb on. 
So you see, tremendous amount of music to unlock inside these three chords. So before you go practice this, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I've got a ton of lessons here, so if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? There are hundreds of free lessons here. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.